We are calling to order the reinvestment zone number 16 city of Houston meeting. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is call roll and establish a quorum because everybody's figured out how this works. So I'll just go through the names and if you're present, please say so. Robert Clay. Robert, are you on? Okay. Dot Cunningham. Present. Thank you. Ethel Johnson. Present. Okay. Steve Lerner is here. Kendall Miller. Yes. Here. here. Judson Robinson. Here. Louis Flar. Present in spirit. Okay. <laughs> That's Jerry. Lisa, are you on? Okay, Mary Carmen Tamez. Present. Okay, great. Thank you all. Okay, now we're going to ask all the Uptown staff to identify themselves, Hi. please. Andrew Jarrett. Even was. Jesse Kirkgaard. Janet Hazel. Madeline John Breeding. Amy Escalante. Delia Miswa. Bob Essington. Right. Bobby. Okay, great. And I think Bob Ethington is also on. Yes. Bob, are you on? Yes, I am. Bob Ethington. Okay. Okay, is that all? Have we taken care of all the staff members? Yes, Sounds sir. like it. Okay, let's do a, If there are any members of the public that are on the call, please identify yourself. This is Lauren Morales with RBC. Great. Hi, Lauren. Thank you. Anybody else? Margaret and Leslie Metro. And Jessica Holodeck with ABHR. Okay, great. I knew there were two people speaking. Perfect. Okay. Sonic Gapsua with Binkley and Barfield. All right. Anybody else from the public? Cornell Emanuel, ABHR. Okay, so. We're going to do this the way we've done the other conference calls. If, you, if you're speaking, uh, please say your name first so we'll know who you are. And if you're not speaking, uh, please mute your phone, okay? So the first order of business is to approve the minutes from the May 27, 2020 meeting. Uh, that is on page one. Uh, I'd like a motion approving the minutes, please. Miller, so moved. Lisa Simon has joined the conference. Okay, okay hi, Lee. Uh, we're just getting started. Uh, so we had, I think, a motion made by. I think Dot moved it. Kendall seconded. Yes, right. Kendall seconds. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries. So we're now going to suspend the reinvestment zone number 16 city of meeting, and we're going to call to order the Uptown Development Authority meeting. Please bear with us. We're going to go through this again. Uh, so we're going to start with the roll call. Uh, Robert Clay? No. Doc Cunningham? Present. Ethel Johnson? Present. The learner is present. Kendall Miller. Yeah, my friend. <laughs> Kendall, I'm going to your lobby. Kendall's here. <laughs> Jetson Robinson. Jetson, I'm thinking you're here. Do you need to unmute? Judson, do you hear us? Louis Sklar? Here. Lisa Simon? Here. Mary Carmen Tamez? Present. Okay. So now we're going to ask all of the Uptown staff, please identify yourselves again. Andrew Jerry. Stephen Wood. Betsy Carcard. 
Shannon Daniels. Matt Wendy Thorne. John Breeding. Amy Escalante. Delia Mislaw. Robert Bobby. Bob Essington. Any other staff members? Okay. And all members of the public, please identify yourself. Lauren Morales with RBC. Jessica Hollebeck with ADHR. Margaret Dunlap with Metro. Monica Espera with Binkley and Barfield. Cornell Emanuel, ADHR. Okay, any other public uh, participants on the call? Robert Clay. Has joined the conference. Oh, good. Hey, Robert, we're just getting started. Hey, sorry I'm late. I've been doing this. Sorry about that. I had to hang up my other phone. Um, okay. Uh, are there any members of the public who wish to make comments at this time? Please speak. meeting uh, uh, it, um, page one of the QDA uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes please Lisa this is my comment oh go ahead Lisa oh I'll make a motion to approve okay. I'll second the motion thank you all in favor aye. Aye. aye thank you the motion passes our next uh, item is is to approve invoice I'm going to turn it over to Anna Daniels for this. Okay, thank you. Uh, page four, you will see a summary of the invoices uh, for approval. On this page, the, uh, the, top, okay, the top section are HCID reimbursement, reimbursement to the district. I will note uh, a couple of year-end items that the TERS reimburses the district for. Um, this is the end of the year where we give 100000 for traffic mobility and public information and 100000 for public information. That's 200000 We also uh, entered into an, a developer agreement with the management district, uh, and this is a time where we pay the debt service on uh, for that uh, for that developer agreement to the tune of 631000 roughly. So that's why you see an increased amount for just over $1 million uh, reimbursement to the districts. So the others are just kind of routine for project management fees and administrative costs since the UDA does not have staff. For that middle section, I would note that uh, we are presenting 64,000, just over 64,000 to reimburse the district for professional services associated with the Postal Boulevard project and the Uptown Transit Center. You will note that these uh, soft costs and, and support services are decreasing as we're nearing the end. I will also note that we are requesting authorization to pay uh, these consultants during July and August should we not have a board meeting to the tune of an estimate of $200,000. We believe that will be sufficient to cover those uh, invoices in the months where the board is not meeting. Then I'll move down to the last section for the UDA contract and work order. You'll see that we're presenting invoices in the amount of just over $283,000 for UDA contracts and work orders primarily for uh, design costs supporting the Memorial Park Land Bridge project. Um, also, I call your attention, we're also requesting approximately, well, $750,000 for this section um, to cover professional services invoices for the months of July and August again to the board not uh, meet. These, uh, the approved invoices are total to 
$1.369 million. We have uh, $990,000 of construction uh, payments, contract payments. Uh, again, we are wrapping up uh, West Park widening. We're finishing up the amended work on uh, the south end of Postal Boulevard with Raytech. They're doing the Metro Communications System as well as Fairdale to Richmond. And then we're getting started with Telepson. This is the first uh, invoice for for the Memorial Park Land Bridge Project, $20,000, totaling just over 990. And then if you add the 950, which again is an authorization to pay invoices when we're not um, in session, it comes to uh, $3.3 .3 million that we're presenting to you for uh, payment and authorization. Page five, pages five through that eight, is uh, kind of like a Word document to give a little bit more information on those contracts and uh, the reimbursements that we have there. Are there questions or concerns regarding the invoices that we're presenting before you? If not, may I request a motion to approve uh, these invoices for payment and authorization to pay uh, up to 750000 for two months in July and August? This is Lisa. I make a motion to approve. Robert, Robert Clay, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Be opposed? Thank you. Motion is passed. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I'll move on, uh, if it's okay, to the uh, MWDB yep. report. That's starting on page nine. <clears throat> The first page is a summary page. The top section gives you the, um, the percentages and the goals that we have in session today. For professional services, our goal is 24, and uh, to date we have achieved a 39% participation rate. For construction, our goal is 17%, and to date we've achieved 21%. That last section is a, a look at the fiscal year to date. That's the current year that we're in. For professional services, we're at 53% participation, and for construction, we're at 15%. I will note that this 15% is more of a tapering off of the main um, transit project, which would be Postal Boulevard and the Transit Center, and I would expect that we see that number go up as we move into the Memorial Park Land Bridge project. Page 10 is just kind of more detail. Pages. 10 and 11 are more detail on the prime contractors and the subcontractors that make up the totals for the fiscal year to date number. We'll see a chart on page 12, which kind of charts the percentages over the month and the month. <coughs> and then uh, next on page 13, you see a further breakdown of those professional services uh, in the different categories for the DBE. Page Page 14 is for construction, the detail on the 15%, who those primary uh, construct, construction contracts are with and who their subs are. And then 15, again, is the, uh, the chart that shows the movement over the year. And this is for your information only. I don't think there's a resolution needed. Are there questions or concerns? Uh, this is Lisa. I do have a question. How difficult is it to meet these requirements? Are there certain sectors where it's really hard for you to certain uh, that require certain uh, skills that you can't find and, and to satisfy the MW, um, MWBBE? Uh, or is it never really hard to meet this? I'll let John and Robert speak to that. Robert, you want to talk? Uh, you want to speak to that? And it's not it's not hard. There is a in in the kind of construction we're doing. There's ample uh, abundance of uh, minority and women-owned businesses that can do the construction that we do, and like in trucking or in striping or these items. So uh, we have been blessed uh, to get the what we need and beyond. So I can only offer that. 
and, I, and I think as you become, uh, you can become more sophisticated in this because uh, the requirement, certainly when we're doing a federally funded transit project, is that you actually look at your community and you see what percent of like the engineers or the concrete group or landscaping or whatever that are actually there and you simply have to achieve those goals. So I think it is all about intent uh, and, and, uh, and effort, um, but we've been fortunate over time to not only get our share of minority and women-owned business doing work with us, but some outstanding firms that have made significant contributions. <coughs> Hey, Robert, Judson here. So when you look at the breakdown of the different groups and the amount of work on page uh, 13, you know, there's a lot of discussion team right now about institutional racism. And I think this is kind of a teachable moment for us in terms of why the percentages are the way that they are as opposed to being more evenly spread amongst the groups. And so it becomes something that we're just used to as a practice, as opposed to looking at why the existing practice does not allow more flexibility for equity. And so it's not something that Uptown has done. It's not, certainly nothing like that is what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you look at the size of the contract awards, uh, you look at the bonding requirements, you look at all kinds of things that are part of the system. That's when, when people talk about there needing to be a greater and a deeper dive of, of how we fix these problems. This is just one example of that. So, you know, as we begin to have these discussions and as we as a leading uh, organization of this type of uh, structure, I'd love for us to again take a look at how we can, as an organization, lead in this area. So it might require us doing things a little different and perhaps even working with, their, with the state to request, you know, um, <clears throat> ways in which we can modify the, the contract awards and, and look at different, you know, ways in which we can, we can be of assistance and just try to lead in this space. This is John, and, and I agree. As, as an organization, as an organization, I mean, we can look at this, and, and I, you know, and I'm particularly looking at professional services. If we, in uh, Shannon, do we have a construction one like no, this? Like we need to do a construction like we have here on page 13. Um, and, and I, I think that it's, it's interesting, uh, Judson, I'd like to even compare our professional services breakdown chart like this to our construction chart like this, because I think we'd see, I, I would hope I'd see improvement, but I, if you will allow us to actually put that together, um, I want to know myself, for example, Right now, the TERS is, is working with Memorial Park, and um, uh, we have been very aggressive on this issue. And, and one of the things that we found, Justin, is that small firms that might happen to be owned by a minority or a woman, but it, small is probably the key thing there, is that they don't have perfect financials. They don't have perfect administration to uh, correct some of these things that we make decisions on. Um, and I, I think that I would state to the board that it is our responsibility, uh, particularly when we have, and I'm and on the construction end, I can speak to this because we're getting bids, that when we find that there are capable firms that can do the work, but somehow are having trouble meeting what I'm going to call the administrative requirements. 
Correct. Sometimes, sometimes even a good financial. Uh, I, sometimes you need to work with folks as much as you need to, because they're good contractors. They just don't have three years of good finance because they're small. Correct. And so I, I pass that on to you. But I would, I would ask you if you'd allow us to not only look at this from a professional services which I, I'm indicted, I, 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 we've achieved our goal, but it, it doesn't reflect our community. And also let us look at our construction, and particularly as we're going through it with Andrew on Memorial Park, because we've had a very good structure from the on of meeting these goals. But I'd like to get back to you on that, if that'd be fair, to the entire board. Thank you, John. I, I, and I'm keenly aware of all the challenges that uh, uh, make it difficult sometimes for those awards to go to minority firms, and I and and I'm just excited that I think right now we're listening to each other about ways in which we can overcome some of these barriers and be more proactive in our ways to be helpful, as opposed to reasons why they simply uh, were not chosen. So absolutely concur. Is, is, is there any way? This is Mary Carmen. Sorry. Is there any way to possibly do for these minority firms some sort of networking event, for example, where we would explain what those requirements are and what help or assistance is available in order to allow them to meet these quotas or the necessary elements that they require and have traditionally been missing? Well, let me just... Please, Jenny, go ahead. Um, that is one of the um, suggestions that they do when you have, and it's something certainly I guess you know we could do, but it is something that they suggest you do when you have federally funded uh, contracts and you are trying to do, um, trying to think of the goal. It's one goal where you where you state the goal, and they do have those kinds of uh, activities that they suggest you do when you when you are using federal funds that you host these kinds of. Uh, events for minority contractors to increase the participation as you're doing your goals. So, um, I, I, and again, I think that unfortunately for the post Oak Boulevard project and, and for the foreseeable future, the charter <laughs> the and development authorities, big uh, capital investments are going to be in the park. And I would like uh, that we could schedule our next board meeting, have Andrew uh, present to you. I, I, we just, as you remember, at our last meeting, we awarded uh, a 11 million dollar contract to a min minority firm uh, that w did uh, uh, construction. Is actually constructing the arch for the tunnels that's being created, and that individual did not have uh, perfect credentials, and we worked uh, around that, uh, and we. Help, we're willing to help buy the, the insurance, et cetera, and, and help them find the appropriate bonding group. Um, but if you will, um, let us really report, because I think the most sophisticated and best job we've done for this is with the land bridge project uh, that is going on, and, and I think we'd have – very good. There's a lot of subs uh, in the construction work, etc. Now I'll tell you, I, I think I think the professional services look a lot like what Post Oak Boulevard looks like. You know, looks like what this chart on page 13 is. Uh, but if you could, I'd like to talk about what we did and who we ended up with uh, for a lot of different subs uh, on the 54 million dollar land bridge project. I think that's a good idea, John. Let's do that. Okay, thank you. Justin, thanks. Thanks for the encouragement. Thanks for the encouragement. Absolutely. Uh, Shannon is. Uh, uh, can you report on the audit request? Okay, on page six. Um, we, we are requesting uh, authorization to enter into an engagement with Whitley Penn for the uh, UDA's FY19, FY20 uh, audit. 
The uh, estimated fee for this year is 20000 compared to just under 20000 last year. And uh, they normally uh, come out in August, September time frame. We do have an October 1st deadline with the City of Houston as we are a component unit in their financials. And so, uh, yeah, we work really hard to meet that deadline and have been successful most times. Uh, yeah, but we'd like to get your authorization to go ahead and engage Whitley Penn to do our 1920 audit for the UDA. So moved. Okay. Justin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to turn over to Stephen Wood, who's going to walk us through the proposed settlement agreement on the acquisition of property with the lofts on post of Stephen Wood, please. Stephen. Uh, First, I'd like to note that we're dispensing with the executive session. Two reasons. The, diff the logistical difficulty of having one with this conference call set up, but also because this is the last parcel that we are actually uh, involved in negotiations over in land price. There's one other parcel that's not complete, which is uh, uh, Inverness, but there's no, uh, there's no disagreement there as to the price of the land. So, uh, there's really no need for confidentiality anymore, which is the reason why you uh, can these discussions in executive session. Um, All right. So for the city has uh, reached a tentative settlement with the Property Owners Association for the Law on Post Oak, which is the condo building directly across the street from our offices here uh, next to the Hilton and uh, next to the Zadok family's uh, new development. Um, I'll just take you through briefly the timeline of how we got here. The UDA initially made an offer back in uh, April of 2015. Page H to 18. Page 18 or 19. Is for you. Um, the initial offer was $277,000. Uh, the negotiations went nowhere. The city took over the negotiations with the uh, idea that they were going to take this to condemnation. They obtained a new appraisal on May 19th of 2017. And then counsel for the city was able to negotiate a right of entry and possession agreement before we went to mediation. So we paid in uh, 397500 to the registry of the court and took possession of the property, which allowed us to build the project. Uh, since then, there's been negotiations going, going on, off and on. And again, the counsel for the city has uh, reached an agreement to pay an additional 102000 which uh, represents a total land price of $203,000 for the property. And we've also agreed that we would build a retaining wall. Uh, that's at least as much for us as it is for them. Uh, it will look a lot better than the plywood that's out there now. So essentially the settlement is an additional 102000 which takes us to an even 500000 for the land, damages, and improvements, and then we'll, we would uh, construct the retaining wall. From a price per square foot, uh, for, uh, price for 263 is 63000 That's in line with what we paid on a lot of other properties. It's actually less than we paid. So. Mr. Chairman, uh, if uh, the board would favorably consider this. Uh, we could uh, put this chapter behind us. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea, and I would highly recommend doing that uh, since we're really getting to the end, and it seems like a reasonable number under the circumstances. So can I have – would someone be willing to make a motion to approve the settlement on these terms? Lisa, make a motion to approve. Dr. Cunningham, second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the motion carries. Thank you very much. All right. Next door. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. Okay. I was just going to. I was just going to go into the change order uh, for Tellison on the land bridge. Are you? 
I may have jumped the gun a little bit. Oh, we're there. Thank you. All right. If you turn, I'd ask everyone to turn to page um, uh, 35. Uh, we have uh, designed for the land bridge project is complete. Uh, you remember uh, we actually awarded Tellison the contract to build this project, uh, but we had to go through a process of then uh, bidding all the subs. Uh, as of this point, uh, literally, I think we're at 99.6% of everything to build this project, we have hard bids on. And, uh, and so the construction part of this project, uh, that number is uh, $54,115,000 as shown on page 35. Within that $54 million, is a, con a contingency of 4%. Uh, and, uh, and that is a, we are moving toward and we will likely ask you uh, to participate in a special board meeting on July 8th. Uh, we have not finished uh, uh, all negotiations, uh, but we are essentially there. We were concerned that we could not be uh, every uh, I dotted and T crossed uh, today, and so we have. Uh, we'll ask you to indulge us by meeting by phone uh, on July 8th, and I think Amy has uh, reached out to you already on this. She has not. So if you can't uh, spend 15, 20 minutes uh, on the 8th, let us know. Um, but uh, in addition to that 4% contingency within the guaranteed max price $54 million uh, contract that we uh, hope to enter into uh, on July 8th. We have an additional uh, $4,285,000 or about an 8.6% contingency uh, that's outside of the uh, guaranteed max price contract with Telepson. So uh, we, I think we're in a very strong position on that. I wanted to give you sort of the overall sense of this, and it's a precursor to what we'll be presenting to you on, on uh, Ju July 8th. On uh, page 36, if you remember at our previous board meeting, uh, we called them change orders, but what essentially it is is an advanced release of the funds before we have fully executed uh, our uh, guaranteed max uh, price contract. But each of these change orders or this advanced funding release uh, is a part of that 54. In other words, it, it doesn't cause the 54 go up. It just simply is allocating some of the funds in that 54 uh, and releasing them so that we could move forward uh, on, uh, on, for example, uh, our change order number one was $359,000 to allow us to do the final design on the arches, our, our, our precast arches. Today, I'm bringing before you on page 37, uh, change order number three, against which we're asking you to release these funds so that we can move forward. Uh, the, the big element here is that uh, the, the, now that we completed design on the arches, the real big element that we really need to get going on is uh, creating the forms for those arches, and that's purchase and fabrication of the steel arches, which we'll use over and over again as we construct the uh, precast uh, pre concrete arches. And that's that $500,000 number. At the same time, we'd like to uh, uh, go forward and release uh, our contractor uh, to begin to do the, uh, the site work prep so that uh, by the time we get out of July the 8th or if something happened and it's a little bit later, we will have achieved the kind of milestones of moving the project forward. So this today, uh, I am asking for, uh, turning to page 38, a total of $814,000 uh, release for change order number three, bringing our total uh, change orders to date of 
for early release of funds of 1,237,307. Uh, there's details, uh, a little bit more standardized form on pages 39 and 40, but essentially it's saying, it says the, the, the exact same thing. Mr. Chairman, question. Is there, is there any reason, sorry, this is Mary Carmen, is there any reason that we continue to refer to them as change orders instead of release of funds? <laughs> Just because it is confusing on, I look at it and I'm like, holy crap, we're, we're authorizing above and beyond what we had awarded. And so I'm just wondering if there's a reason behind this. If, if the attorneys would tell me, I, I'd be glad to call them whatever. Yeah, I guess, I mean, we could call it something else, but what we, it's, it's a mechanism to get board approval to spend more than the original amount that was authorized, which was $20,000 uh, when, we, when we approved Telefin as the uh, general contract manager at risk uh, before approving the $54 million amount. And so, yeah, it's... it's, but, it's but we've already approved the $54 million. And, and so that's... We, we have, when, when we awarded uh, the contractor at risk to Tillotson, it was discussed and that number has recurred because that's been our budgeted goal, a $54 million project, and that's why. And if you remember, all Tillotson wanted to get going was $20,000 on page 38, the original authorization. So I don't like the word change order either because it suggests that you're increasing the contract amount. But we are increasing the contract. The, the, the guaranteed maximum price contract hasn't been awarded yet. And so the contract that we initially had was a $20,000 contract. Mary Carmen. Did, did, did that, did, this, yeah. This, the, yeah. Mary Carmen, your comment is absolutely correct. However, we've sort of done it this way and I, I can honestly say I think it's for lack of any other way of doing it, but I think there's no misunderstanding, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, Tellefson has no expectation that the numbers changed $1 from the $54 million number, right? Correct. And I also want to just ask one question to make sure I understand this, and this is my belief too, is we need to do this in large part to get the, uh, to start work on this, uh, with the $500,000 contract to get the uh, uh, form started, or we're going to have a time issue. Is that correct? Yeah. That, that, that's the biggest thing. Uh, it, is it really and truly, we probably wouldn't come to you if it hadn't been for the purchasing the steel. And, 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 and the other funds, there's just a little bit, well, what if we don't have a quorum on July the 8th, and that gets delayed right. a week or two? And, 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 and those are funds that we could actually get the project, uh, the site, you know, people on site and getting them to go to work. Yeah, I, I can say that having done this a time or two, with precasting pre is a very, it's a, lead, it's a lead time item. And so, you know, they can't start without some money. Um, so I totally get that. Um, Anybody else and I do, I do understand both sides. It just, it makes me very nervous. Again, having been in the architectural world, whenever I see a change order, it just, Look, it makes me nervous. Man, but I'll, I'll go along with it. And I didn't mean to cause any issues. I just. No, that's a good question. Sure. If you'll notice, what typically happens in a real change order is you'll see the starting construction prices or pre adjustments based on previous change orders. You'll see adjustment based on change order, and you'll see a new total. We don't see any of that because there isn't any. But uh, I think everybody on the call has sort of had to get. We, we kind of get need to get through. Yeah, this is an odd way to do it, but this is. But it's okay. But it's an absolutely appropriate question. Uh, who who owns? This is Lewis. Uh, who owns the precast? Uh, or the arches when the job is over? Do, do we own it or does the contractor own it? So, I'm going to ask Andrew to respond to that. Uh, Tricon will end up owning the forms. Okay, so uh, that is a true 100% expense reflected in the contract, and there's, there's no uh, expectation we would get anything back from it should they be able to sell them or use them on another job. But they're theirs. That's correct. Okay. I don't know, Lewis. 
you have any land bridges we can we can think of we could we could uh, we could use them for? I'm all well. I'm, uh, I'm just you know these are these arches do form a what is you know could be a standard roadway. So I, you know in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, they may be doing something similar. So I I uh, thought I would ask. No, it's a fair question. I like that. I'm looking for a bridge uh, over a river at my ranch. Could I use them? <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's authorize that. <laughs> yeah, I'll give them back, I'm sure, because I don't want them when they're done, but uh, I'd like to use them next for a month or two. <laughs> Playing. <laughs> Can we have a motion to approve that spending this uh, $814,000 so-called change order? Uh, this is Lewis. I saw my... This is Lewis. I'll second. I'll second. Oh, sorry. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Thank, thank you very much for approving it, and thank you all for being willing to go with a little bit odd nomenclature, if you will. Because it is a little odd. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I could just jump in. July the 8th, at a time convenient, we'd say 2.30. Uh, for a phone in, uh, literally uh, present to you uh, the, uh, the recommendation on the uh, uh, guaranteed max price contract. Uh, yeah. Everybody check your schedules and, we'll, and we'll, we'll be contacting you. June 8th, John, July 8th, John at 2.30? That's correct. Okay. Works for a minute. All right. All right, well, we'll be in direct contact with you today. Everybody be looking for an email uh, so we get that done. I have nothing else, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. So procedurally, we're going to recess the Uptown Development Authority meeting. We're going to reconvene the tourist meeting, and we're going to adjourn both reinvestment zone number 16 and the Uptown Development Authority are both adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Participating. We will talk to you, we hope, on July the 8th.